I can make a YouTube video that can get 500,000 views. I can make a video about, let's say, My Hero Academia and, uh, you know, like write a highly analytical point about it that impresses people and um, draws a lot of attention. And I can get endorsement deals from various companies. I can start selling merchandise related to that uh, career. I can get my foot into the industry itself. I have can I have just recently developed connections that could lead to me participating in the anime industry in a more meaningful way. So, you know, I'm I'm now a guy who gets invited, paid to come to anime conventions. You know, I'm a. I'm at that level. I'm like a famous person in the anime community. But that's the career that I don't know what to do with right now. Because um, the career I'm interested in is being a cult guy. Like having this cult following, which is where most of my money comes from, is the cult following. You know, so like in terms of what is actually paying my bills, the cult following is the career that matters. But that's also partly because I'm focusing so much on that career. You know, there I could make the anime career into something that makes money but using these connections I have. You know, this is what Jeff Thu has done, Mother's Basement. This is what, um, you know, a lot of the guys are trying to do, is to make a career as an anime YouTuber. I, meanwhile, am trying to make a career as a cult of personality. And these two things, while they're deeply interconnected, there's also a clear separation. So... How do I find a way to combine these two better? That's kind of what I'm going for right now. How do I find a way to, you know, to be a relevant anime YouTuber and for that to be part of my cult of personality in a, in a, in a way that they don't feel so separate? Because a lot of my fans, a lot of you guys, my patrons, the people in the Patreon Discord, my anime YouTube content is not your favorite thing I do. Or it's not the thing you even really... Like, I could stop doing it, and some of you would still be around. You know? Not all of you, but a lot of you would still be around. Because you, you're here for the cult of personality. You know? How do I join those two better? Because what I think that people don't um, realize about that career, what, what the investors, what the people who want to back me don't realize is that I'm not what's for sale. The anime I talk about is what's for sale. When you have someone who, let's say, like like myself, who if I make a video about Sword Art Online, that's what's going to get 500,000 views. If I make a video about My Hero Academia, if I make a video about a popular show, or if I make a big uh, shit-talking video that gets lots of attention because it's like following the trends of what's popular on YouTube, um... Me, the culture product of Digibro, is a much more niche product, you know? So, you can't sell me as a mainstream product. And this is where the kind of divide happens. The people who want to sponsor me, the people who want, who want to work with me and view me as, like, a popular figure, don't understand that if I don't talk about something highly relevant, they don't get the, the, the you know, the reach that they're hoping for. Because my reach is dependent on what I'm talking about. Um, which is why someone like Mother's Basement has a search engine optimization guy. You know, someone who figures out what videos will have the highest reach. And he makes those videos and has a huge reach with them. You know, even if he's less respected as a cult of personality, he's highly successful as an anime YouTuber. And I'm not. And you can see that in my current output where I'm not getting great view counts on my current videos, you know? Like, if I make a video like How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Skip Akashic Records, which was me putting a very clever twist on talking about one of the most popular shows of the season, um, I can have a, a runaway success video. You know, and that was the intentions of that, was look at the most popular shows, how can I talk about one of these without it being uh, having to watch it <laughs> and, and, and do some shit I don't care to do, you know? Um, but when I make a video like my favorite anime, whatever, um, those videos aren't successful because it's not a relevant show. The only relevancy is that it's me, it's my favorite anime, but I, like, I might have 320,000 YouTube subscribers, but not all of them care about me. They care about 
anime. They care about certain shows that are popular, and they'll watch those videos, you know? But they're not going to just watch anything I put my name on. That's the cult of personality who will do that. How do you make those two the same thing? So what I realized is my goal is to make it so I am the relevant one. That it's not anime that's, like, not the anime I'm talking about that's so relevant it makes, you know, it, it makes a splash. It's that I am so relevant I make a splash. And I can be that sometimes, and a lot of people mistake me for that. When I make a rant about the anime industry and its problems and people jump down my throat for the controversial statements I've made, it's because they think I am hyper-relevant and I am not hyper relevant. I'm kind of relevant, you know, but I have the opportunities to be hyper relevant and I want to, that's what I want. I want it to be that I'm known for, you know, for being myself, not for the shows I talk about. You know, I don't want to have to bring back your anime sucks or to, uh, you know, talk about every popular current show to be the most uh, popular anime YouTuber. I want it to be that because people like me and want to come to what I have to offer. So that's what I think I'm trying to do right now. And my favorite anime, these videos were kind of an experiment in that where it was like, I need to make anime content because that's what people want from me. But I don't want to make it. I want to make it on my terms. I want to make it about shows I care about in a way I care about, you know, and they're they're fine. They're not like completely unsuccessful. It's not like no one's watching them. But, you know, they're this shows you where my real like where my real relevance lies. Like how much do people just care to hear me talk about a show? That's what you're seeing with these view counts. Particularly Ponyo, because it's a show that's not very relevant at all. Um and that one's got like less than forty thousand views. And I'm like, that's the real size of like my relevancy. Uh it's not the three hundred K. It's the thirty five K. You know, people who watched it because it's a video I made. Um so you know, and that's that's the sort of the, the competition of sides going on. I'm going to stop recording for a second while I think about where I'm going with this because I feel like I've started repeating myself. So where I think this has gotten weird is that, you know, a lot of my content is tied to my lifestyle and how I'm seeing myself in the moment. Usually the times when I do start making, you know, videos about relevant anime and like trying to really get myself out there is because I want to be making more money. You know, I've had all these different crossroads where I've sat there and gone like, okay, my, my, my career is doing okay, but I'd like to be making more money. And so I make videos that I think will increase my reach, bring in more patrons, bring more people into the fold. And when I changed my Patreon, it was sort of in an effort to make it so I could make more money without needing more reach, necessarily. You know, where, like, I could just better optimize my current reach. Because I don't have that many patrons. I have less than a 1,000 patrons um, out of 320,000 subscribers. You know, that's a paltry percentage of my, of my patrons. How do I get the people I already have to just want to be b bigger fans? How do I indoctrinate them into the cult of personality? And I think that's kind of where I've been over the last few months, you know, it's why I've been more focused on the human content machine idea, this idea that I always have stuff to come out that I can fulfill so many different avenues that people will, you know, not necessarily have to watch all my stuff, but they'll still be inundated with my thoughts and ideas and, you know, want to experience this unique worldview and sort of take a journey with me, become a part of the narrative that is digibro you know um which is why things like the light novel work like you're you're kind of a part of the narrative of this guy who has these like opinions about light novels and then like goes and writes one that's like a meta clusterfuck of them and, and shit like that you know like it's all about tying it into me and and drawing people closer and closer and that's definitely been my big focus right now and you know, I got to find a way to do that on a bigger scale I think to like simultaneously be drawing people you know, into as just casual fans and then drawing them into the cult, you know, um, b as opposed to, again, like making just hyper relevant anime shit. And I think what's going to be the key to making this work is to expand the way I think of relevancy 
in talking about anime because so much of how I've thought about it is talk about popular show. And that's the obvious easy route to take. Um, but my other kind of video that always gets big is um, broad anime concept, especially about the industry, where I can do, like, why good anime is hard to make. My second biggest video, the first one that blew up, you know, it's about the problems facing the anime industry. And I've explored most of the ideas in that realm that I've wanted to. And the biggest reason I haven't gone farther in that world is that I don't know enough. Like, I don't have connections in the industry. I don't... I can't talk to people about why they did the things they did or like why the state of affairs is what it is. However, I'm starting to make connections that can get me closer to that. And it's starting to become important, not only to the industry, but to me, you know? So like, I think where I need to go is to sort of create a new relevancy, something that's bigger than whatever anime is on TV, like to sort of help change the way that anime fans think about anime and think about what's relevant, you know, draw people away from caring so much about currently airing shows and being a part of that conversation and draw them into a bigger conversation about anime and sort of make them care about it in a deeper way than just, uh, I watch a show and talk about it once a week, you know? And like, I'll never get everybody to do that, but like, there's definitely a, a pendulum swing where more and more people are talking about the industry. It becomes big news when something happens in the industry now, you know, like something controversial, like this big kimono friends thing that's gone on, which I don't even know the full fucking story on this thing. I haven't been, uh, exactly clear, but I think it's like the original team got shit canned by the, uh, by the publishers or whatever, and it's making a big stir. Like, people care about that. And, you know, if I knew enough of the story, I could report on it. And, I mean, it's more news than it is an analytical thing, but, like, if I could make it an analytical thing, you know, and I'm I'm getting into a position where that could be possible. Um, And I kind of see that as, like, possibly the future of, of where I'm taking this. And I also just want to expand. Like, I don't have to just be an anime guy. Um, But, like, whenever people ask me if I consider doing, like, oh, do you want to do stuff other than anime? Like, it's not, I don't want to just go examine films, you know? Like, because that's what's the obvious, like, yeah, if I stop doing just anime, it's like, well, I can analyze games or I can analyze movies, you know, but, like, or TV shows. That's not the avenue I want to go down, you know? If I talk about stuff outside of anime, I still want it to be bigger, broader, you know, stuff I'm interested in in doing, stuff that other people aren't doing, um, just to create a new niche, which has kind of always been my thing. When I, when I, you know, expand, I do so by trying to make people care about something they didn't before, as opposed to giving them what they already want, you know? Um, that's kind of been the way my whole career has gone, is, like, teach people about a new thing that they didn't know they cared about, and then, like, you know, draw them into the fold that way. And I feel like there's more to be to be done on that front. But I'm also in a weird place in life where I, I need time. I need time to think about that kind of shit. And, you know, I also am really satisfied with the way my life is going. Like, even though, yes, I still want to make more money and expand my empire and expand my relevance, I'm also in a really good place. You know, I make a lot of money. I have a, a happy life. And, um... You know, I'm getting an insane amount of work done in spite of the amount of leisure time I have now, like, because I turn so much leisure into work, you know, Digi and May do, or, like, um, any of my podcasts that I enjoy doing, uh, like, we, we've got one, um, there's five episodes already recorded of Digi and May's Pokemon Journey, which should be coming out by the time this, uh, podcast goes up, which is just me and May hanging out and watching Pokemon movies, because it seems like a fun thing to do, you know, it's not really work, but it, it's a product still, you know? So like I've been doing a lot of stuff like that and sort of packing my content to the gills so that there's like shit coming out all the time. But again, it's only relevant to the cult. It's not bringing in new people. You know, I'm just making the cult stronger and stronger, uh, but it's still insular. So like, where's the middle ground there? 